What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For The Record. I'm your host, Rob Markman. As you know, it's March. That's Women's History Month. And here at Genius, we are celebrating a woman's hustle. Luckily for me, I'm able to do it with Patron today and three of my favorite artists who just happen to be women. We're gonna be talking about how they blaze trails through the industry, how they carved out space, and how they inspire others. We're gonna get into the introductions right now. Our first guest, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about this woman, man. As an MC, the coldest of the cold, um, albums on 10 every time, okay? Grammy-nominated albums, let me start with that. Layla's Wisdom and Eve. She's a friend of mine, too. I'm, I'm glad to have friends like this in my corner, Rap City. Welcome to For The Record. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Nah, I'm always happy. It's always, you, you're a loved one, so it's always when we get to chop it up with you, it's always an honor and a pleasure. Our next guest, another favorite of mine, somebody who I admire, not just for her wordplay, but her songwriting ability, her independent hustle, the way that she could record a song and show it to us on YouTube or her IG stories, and then it's on Spotify the next day, and then that same weekend she's shooting a video on Monday, it's up. Her merch game is on point. When we open up back up and tour again, that's one of the first shows that I'm going to. She reps Mexican heritage to the fullest and just one of my favorite people. Snow the Product, welcome back to For The Record. What's up, man? Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Nah, no, thank you. And last but certainly not least, this woman, actually the last time I had a good time was at one of her concerts. It was the last concert I went to before everything shut down and, and you know, we got the stay at home order because we're fighting COVID, wear a mask, make sure y'all take care of your health. But she's an incredible single songwriter. She puts all of her soul into her music. You could really feel it. She dropped her J debut album in the jungle is the only way out in 2019. Last year, she linked with her fam, Spillage Village, and they dropped their album. And now she's here just to talk all about her hustle and how she puts her thing down. Mariva, welcome to For The Record. Thank you for having me. We couldn't be together, obviously, like COVID, we're still socially distanced. It feel like we're going to get out of this thing soon, but until then, we're going to be safe. But I just wanted to, to sit with, with some dope artists who I admire, have a little drink, and have a little conversation. So, like I mentioned, we partnered with Patron, and they kindly set us up with some cocktails. This right here, they gave this a name, and it's an appropriate name. It's called the Modern Goddess Cocktail. It has some resposado, some cold brew, a little bit of honey, tonic, orange liqueur. And now before we get into this conversation, I just want to kind of raise a glass and toast. Can we do that? Absolutely. Yes, for sure. I want to toast to three amazing artists who, as women, are blazing trails and inspiring not just women, but men too. All right, and any artist, however you identify, could look to y'all and find some inspiration. What y'all doing is truly amazing. So cheers to y'all. Cheers. 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 Cheers, everybody. Clink. That's cute. Yes. Wow. Come on, wow. Patron. Yep. The That's modern good. goddess. I like that. I want to take it back just to when all of y'all started getting into it. Um, I because I think for now, and like I said, I, I truly look to all of you and admire all of you and are inspired by all of you. I think as as young women though, it's very important to see women blazing trails and, and getting into new spaces, rap, whether it's at the Grammys, you know, Marie, but whether it's you on stage, you with Spillage Village amongst the boys, like adding that soul and that good feminine energy. Snow, if it's you with your, with your business mindset and, and just the way you go at it, it gives young women something to aspire to. When y'all were um, younger, coming into the game and aspiring to be where you at. Who are some of the women that y'all looked up to? I mean, I think we're probably all going to overlap on, <laughs> on on women that we we looked up to. I think Miss Lauren Hill, obviously, Missy Elliott. Um, to me, uh, in, in Mexican culture, there's Maria Felix, um, Alejandra Guzman, Gloria Trevi. Those are all, like, really strong, powerful women that kind of took no shit, you know. Um, Maria Felix, I actually have her tattooed on my arm. Um, She's like the most famous Mexican actress in history and even just one of the most famous actresses in history, you know, in the world. And um, she just was a badass. Like she didn't care. Like she just, she's the most amazing person. You know what I mean? Like, and she lived the longest life ever. Like she, she died at like 80 something, I think. And on her birthday, which meant like she came out one way. She, she left that way. She was like, I had a full life. I, she, 
just the stories are endless about her. So I think, um, yeah, them. But as far as hip hop, obviously, um, you know, the GOAT, Miss Lauren Hill. <laughs> Rap, I feel like Lauren is on your list. We've talked about this. Come on, you know, that's... That's my latest, my greatest, my biggest inspiration. Um, so definitely Lauren, but, you know, MC Light and Queen Latifah, you know, they came first. Um, I got to see myself in them and understand, you know, that women even had a space in hip hop. Because at the age I saw them, those were the first two women that I saw. Um, but, you know, there's so many more like Roxanne Shante, um, you know, getting to know her and her story more. Um, let me think. Uh, even outside, though, like Mary J. Blige, right? the queen of, um, of soul and hip hop, uh, you know, she was always an inspiration, but even outside of music, uh, I'm a big fan of Felicia Rashad. I'm a big fan of Cicely Tyson. You know, That's I hate that I never got to, to meet her, but she was a big inspiration, but as well as like writers like Nikki Giovanni, right? Um, Maya Angelou, uh, you know, so, so many, so many, you know, I just try to draw from any, but most importantly, it started for me with the village at home, you know, with my moms and my aunts, like, you know, that's what, that was my first inspiration of, of, you know, just being a dope woman and taking care of your business, even if it was in the home, you know, or showing up um, for family. So, you know, that laid the foundation of how I even showed up in hip hop. Listen, I, I got my Mary J. Blige hot take right now. I'm just going to put it out there. Unbeatable in the verses. Who want the smoke? I don't care who it is, man. Get MJV up there. Unbeatable. She got to do it like D'Angelo, marry your friends. <laughs> That's the only way to do it. Facts. <laughs> they found the cheat code. But Reba, how about you? When, when you were looking up, you know, as, as a child, um, looking for your space, right? And, and the space that you were going to occupy in this music thing, even inside or outside of music, who, who were the women that you looked up to that maybe gave you that confidence that, nah, I could do this, like, th this is me right here? Honestly, it's really similar to rap in the sense of it starting at home. My mom comes from, like, she has five sisters, so just seeing my aunties, my mother do their thing, handle their business, have grace and integrity, and just be beautiful representations of, of powerful women was the first thing. But also Lauren, like I still remember the first time I heard Lauren's voice and it stopped me in my tracks. And I was like, that's, that's it. That's the wavelength I'm going for. Um, and, but there's so many, honestly, like probably around that same era of time, I really was into TLC and Left Eye particularly. Um, and Erica, Erica Badu, um, I loved Whitney Houston's energy and her, her, obviously her voice and just her, I mean, obviously she was, she was kind of branded a certain way, but beyond that, she was just a very outspoken, powerful black woman that was in the limelight, but just kept a certain essence to her that I really admired when I was a child too. Um, and Nina Simone. Yeah. Nah, that, that's real. You know, it's funny you mentioned Whitney, too, because I think Whitney occupied that space of just a superstar that you had to respect. I remember being a kid and watching her do the national anthem at the Super Bowl, and then they cut that clip and used to play that on the radio like it was a single, just Whitney singing the national anthem. But at the same time, us seeing Whitney also felt very relatable. So, so it was this balance of, like, a superstar, but somebody who felt like maybe one of us, and, and this is me speaking from a man, so I know if I could relate in that way, I can only imagine, I, I can imagine that makes it feel very real. Like, oh, wow, this is obtainable. Like, we can reach these heights, you know? And and I feel like y'all doing that for, 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 for young girls now, looking to, again, to find their space, and, and, and it's amazing. Um, Mariba, I wanted to direct this question at you, because you're, you're part of the Atlanta-based collective Spillage Village. Um, you know, y'all just dropped y'all album last year. It, it, it's so dope, Spilligion. Um, I mean, so we're talking about Jed, you know, Black is a part of that thing, Earth Gang, and others. Um, as the woman in the group, as the feminine energy, right, how does that whole kind of dynamic work with all, with all that testosterone creative? <laughs> how, how did that thing come together? Um, well, I grew up with an older brother, and I feel like they're my extensions of that. Like, I grew up... And my brother was not that type of brother that was like, 
um, soft and gentle with me. He was like, nah, like get, get yourself together, keep up with me. And that's kind of how it is with them. Like, I feel like we really sharpen each other just like on a personal level and definitely on a writing level. Um, but I've just, I've known them for so long. We, we kind of like grew up in this music thing together. So, um, there's definitely a respect there that's really refreshing to step into a room as the only woman a lot of times and feel genuine respect and like you're really being listened to and valued for for your gift, you know what I mean? Um, but it's also just jokes. They're just, it's just, they're hilarious. We all are just, you know, um, real quick with it. So you definitely cannot um, be caught lacking when it comes to expression and your ideas because people are going to tell you like that shit's whack so um <laughs> it's been such a great experience just growing up together and just watching the ways we've all blossomed and making the album was such a crazy experience specifically because it was in the middle of a pandemic obviously but um yeah it, it's 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 empowering you know and I feel like it's good for them too because it keeps it balances the energy. My presence balances the energy a little bit. That's super dope, and I think it's so important that you said that because it sounds like they challenge you, and, and, and that y'all all challenge each other creatively with the ideas, right? But I, the most important thing that, or at least resonated with me, was the respect. When you talk about the respect, was in the room um, for you as, as a creative, as a woman, as an equal, you know, and. That's the way it absolutely should be. Rap and snow. I, I'll throw this to y'all because I think in the ideal world, that's what it should be. Realistically, that's probably not always the experience, right? Or, or oftentimes just isn't the experience, especially when you're talking about rap. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and hip hop, which has been male dominated for so long. What's your experience been like as, as a woman in hip hop rap? We could start there and then go to snow for sure. If I'm talking about my peer, my group, who I came up with, um... I can say for me, it was pleasant. You know, I felt respected. I felt like I, you know, in the same sense of Mariba, I had a circle of family, you know, um, big brothers, little brothers. You know, I came up with some hyenas. I came up with Kendrick and I came up with Chance and Freddie Gibbs and Mac Miller and uh, Absol. I could go on and on. Um, but the respect was always there. So within the within the culture of hip hop, you know, I, I felt like, you know, it was like growing up with the homies or, you know, the brother and Jamla with all the artists. It was, you know, it was family and respect and we were just all trying to make each other better. Um, if anything, I say where the respect might have been lacking and you like, yo, no, no, y'all going to I got to I got to put my foot in it so y'all could know that I'm not playing. You're like, you're going to respect me before anything is, you know, in the business and everything outside of that. You know, that's when it gets tricky. Um and, you know, you got to stay on your ground and, and say, like, yo, this is my lane. This is what I'm I'm going to manifest myself, demand, and expect for myself is respect. Um, and you do that. For me, doing that was through the music. You know, no matter what happened, you always continually to talk your joint through the music and make the best music. Because you, you could try it for so long, but you can't deny good music. I don't care who you are. After a while, you got to come see me. <laughs> So that's what it that's what it was always about, you know, um, making sure you 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 stood up for your respect. Um, but you know, within my peer group, I always felt like, you know, I had a lot of fun and a lot of inspiration and I felt like, you know, we respected each other. So that that's what it was for me. It's just the business and everything outside of that, you know, knowing how to compartmentalize and separate those two. And you do put it all out in the in the music, right? And and and, and your pains, your struggles, your triumphs. I, I just want to go because one of my favorite songs from you is it's a newer song, but it quickly rose to my, one of my favorite raps. You know what this is, um, and this for a lot of reasons is my favorite song, but Cleo, but <laughs> shout out to my man, Be That. But you said, remember early on, y'all ain't trying to treat me all the same, though. Used to question why the brothers even rock with me for. Remember when y'all wondered, used to wonder about wonder, shout out to Knife Wonder, question why they ever wanted to push a black woman. Um, so... It, it wasn't. It wasn't always a, a smooth road, though, right? The majority of it was smooth, right? The the part that wasn't that particular line that was directed at a, a few people, you know, like one within my circle, one guy that was in my circle, 
and you know outside of that you know internet we know how internet is right at the time i allowed myself to you know put my energy into it i know now like i don't have to take on that energy and i don't have to put energy like if that's how you feel about whatever you feel that's your opinion i'm over here so you know um no it's not 100 percent smooth but the ones that matter and I know who they are, that's the ones that I give energy to. So, you know, I think once you understand that, um, that's what it is. You're always going to have, you know, some some hurdles to get through, right? Um, but I could say for overall majority-wise, when it came to my peer group, it was a good experience. You know, you always going to get those one or two that test you, though. And I, I appreciate it because at the end of the day, they are a mirror to you, right? And they, they allow you to see yourself, like, what do I need to work on? If I'm letting you get to me for whatever reason, what insecurities do I have, right? And that's kind of what it is. I'm, I'm gonna talk my joint, but you know, I could say for real, Rob. Overall, it was a great experience for me, especially within my peer group. I love that for you because you 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 deserve it, and and and, and it, it, it's great to hear the stories too. Again, for young aspiring and artists, knowing that hey, it doesn't have to be hard, and and if you surround yourself with the right people and the route foundation. Um, you can grow and prosper in this way, the way that it's supposed to be. Um, Snow, what what was your experience like kind of coming up and making a name for yourself, you know, knowing this is such a male-dominated industry? And then also you being independent at the same time, so it's not only on the mic, right? It's also with the business and, and, and balancing the two. What was your experience like? I think coming up and trying to earn my respect was actually very hard. Um, for me, um, I'm Mexican. I'm first generation American. So both my parents are immigrants. Both my parents are from Mexico. Um, there is no lane for a Mexican rapper. Um, I'm lighter complected. So that has its own issues of people wondering if I'm white, wondering, you know, why I even deserve a voice, like if, if I even came from any struggles. So it was a lot, you know, there was a lot of like double standards from everything from, you know, me being LGBT to me being, you know, Hispanic to just all these different things. And also not having someone walk me in those rooms. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't know anybody in hip hop, like nobody, I didn't have anybody to kind of guide me or help me or even give me advice. So I had to make a lot of mistakes on my own and it was, it, it was hard, you know? Um, but I think, um, now, uh, now I realize why, you know what I mean? Now I realize the blessing that, it is to have done it 100% like brick by brick, fan by fan, sell the CDs out my trunk, you know, get told no all them times. Like now I get to, you know, with my company and like with, with future artists that I sign and stuff, like now I get to really like know, you know what I mean? There's a difference between teaching because somebody taught you and there's a difference between teaching because you learned that shit, you know what I mean? And it, I think um, it's now a blessing to be able to, bless others and to be that mentor that I didn't have and I think it's going to make me that much of a better person in these years to come so I think I think it's all good now but I could definitely tell you it was hard to earn it you know what I mean like I knew I could rap but that's not enough you know I, I knew that I could gain a fan base but I, I that wasn't enough so I think um it was just it was a lot of trials and tribulations and a lot of trying to feeling like I have to prove myself both in Spanish and in English, you know? And now it's like to see that LGBT is in the forefront, immigration conversations are in the forefront, you know, rappers that rap fast are in the forefront. Like all these things are out here and it's like, oh, okay, bet. Like I was ahead of my time on that shit. Like y'all just had to say that. Y'all didn't have to make me feel like I was inadequate or I was wrong. Y'all could have just been like, we're not ready for something like you. And I think I would have avoided a lot of the mistakes that I, you know, eventually that, that now I know I made, which was to get, get around certain companies that maybe like weren't ready for an artist like myself, you know, but, um, it's all good though. <laughs> but you still, you know what I, I, I love about it. And I, and I hear also the, the, the maybe not, not the pain. Oh well, yeah. Right. There's some degree of pain when you talk and, and tell your story. And I think that could be, relatable as well and the fact that you're in a position to help others so they don't have to go through what you went through but I love when yeah. you get on the track and you still talk your shit like oh I'm gonna talk my shit all <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on my shit was one of the singles that you dropped during the pandemic and you said all I do is get the cities get a check for getting Liddy got a couple male rappers getting jealous that I'm winning 
How the fuck you let a female do what you can't? You a ass boy. What a waste. I ain't never had a handout. Beg for no plate. But I feel bad for your mom for the bitch that she raised. That felt personal. Somebody got sniped at. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, like I, I earned this so hard, right? Like it's, this was hard earned, hard built. Like with my brother, he's still here from the beginning of my career. Like literally we, we did this like a family thing. And my first thought is when I get my independent like label going, I'm going to help people, you know, come up and I'm going to give them the opportunity that I wish somebody handed me, you know? And I learned the hard way that you can't give people too much too quick because then they just don't know how to accept that or appreciate that. So they get lost in the sauce. So, yeah, I had to, like, have a little jab at somebody that thought, you know, they really thought. And I'm just like, come on, bro. Like, don't do not do that. Like, you know, you didn't earn you didn't earn this shit like that to be talking that type of shit. So you realize quickly that um, maybe next time I'll do I'll, I'll I'll fix a couple things. Maybe there's a reason that artists don't get everything handed to them. But um, yeah, don't 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 play with me. Pretty much is what I was letting people know. I, I ain't gonna lie, and, and and more so for rap and snow because y'all on the rapping side of things. Even those two lyrics that we talked about, man, woman, or child, to be on the receiving end of those <laughs> of those shots that y'all sent. Oh my God, it's so crushing. I, look, I, I just hope we cool because I never want to be in the receiving. Even Mariba, Mariba might just sing me a, a sub, man. I just so I want to stay in y'all good graces, so I don't never have to feel that venom. Because as, as as kind as y'all are, like y'all y'all some assassins for real. Can I say something about that though? Isn't it true? And I and I know that maybe ladies, you guys could tell me like, but it does hurt. Like I think as much as like you know, it's beautiful. Like I think being a woman is beautiful because. We, we are powerful, we are, you know, we have all these things, but it's like we are emotional and sensitive and, and not emotional in the sense that, you know how dudes can be like, oh, you're being emotional. Like, no, like we, there's a certain power that comes with being this emotional creature that we are. And I think it hurts. I think it hurts when you are hurt by someone in your immediate circle or when men that you trust, like, you know, break that trust. And it's like, and that's where that woman scorn comes from. And you do have, and I do think that, a woman will hurt some feelings. You know what I mean? And usually it comes from some sort of pain that somebody inflicted on you. We don't just, we ain't just out here wilding for no reason. <laughs> Those were deserved shots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all talked about in the beginning about the women that y'all looked up to um, coming up in the game. Um, did you ever get a chance to connect with any of them as mentors? Um, Rat, for example, I, I know you and Queen Latifah um, work on the Eve project and, and, and she blessed you with a feature. Um, when, when you meet kind of women who have been here before, maybe blaze the trail for you. And, and this is for all of y'all. What, what are the conversations like? Is, is there mentorship there? Is there like, like what goes on? Rap, you, you could go first and you know, since you got the Latifah feature, since you working with the queen I, and every time they play the, the, the commercial for her new show, the equalizer, your song Cleo plays on, on, on the commercial. Yeah, so they don't forget. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't try it. <laughs> um, man, it's, it's been a beautiful, it's been beautiful to have a, a sisterhood and kinship, um, you know, with the women that came before the first one, though, I have to acknowledge is Rod Digger. Rod Digger was the very first one to reach out and give me my very first feature, um, after big daddy came. And of, you know, of the sisterhood, she was the first one. And, you know, still to this day, we keep in touch. Um, so I, I think it's beautiful when, you know, you have a, a point of reference and somebody go to like, yo, how did you handle this when this happened? Or how was it when you came up? Or, you know, just to get their thoughts and, and mentorship to help guide your path. Right. So you're not all the way walking through it through the dark. Like, you know, it's a blessing that I came up under the toolage of Ninth Wonder and Young Guru. Right. But at the same time, there's only a, a, a certain perspective a man can relate to me, right? And, and our path in this music business, in the same way Snow was talking about, you know, as a woman, some things feel different or hurt different or, 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 you know, our path can be a little harder in some areas. You know, where I have a Rod Digger to call, I have a Queen Latifah now, MC Light, um, you know, even with Misa Hilton and, uh, you know, talking to Mary sometimes, um, you know, the beautiful thing about La is La called me out the blue for anything. Like we be talking about the stars and the planets, and then we talking about books that we read in, but we also talking about the music. So 
you know, I think I think it's just good to have somebody that's walked that path that you know, like you know, if I, if I fall into a, a bond and I need you know some advice, I had I know I can call somebody that has walked the path before me, you know. Um, so I mean, it's dope and it means something. Um, and you know, even for me, that's why I try my best to make sure you know the ones coming up after me, I reach out, you know. Because I used to be you, and I remember how sometimes it felt, you know, like Chino A. I, I love her, and um, man, I'm drawing a blank, but there's so many. But you know, it's just like I'm here, and there's nobody that can't hit, hit me because I the same thing that those ladies did for me, I want to do for them. Even Lauren, right? Which is which is hard, but it. I don't talk to Lauren like that, but I might get an email out the blue, like Lauren said that she loved your BET performance. For me, that means something like, you know, or the first time I did get to meet her, I, I always asked for advice. And um, this was what I was trying to figure out my show situation. And she gave me constructive advice. It wasn't no, oh, you did great. She was like, yo, work on this, this and this, that. And that helped me grow. So those are the things, you know, that you're thankful for to have those opportunities. Yo, Snow, Mariba, you know who I call when I need advice? Who's that? Rap. <laughs> She la she laughed, but it's the truth. How many times I called you? How many times I hit you, right? And you be there for me? Yeah, no, we be talking. Fact, fact. Same though. You always there for me, like Mariva. You know, I'm just meeting Snow for the second time, but it's virtually. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's a community, and this is what culture is about. You know, and that's the beauty of it that you know we don't have to put ourselves on an island that we can lean on each other. You know, and and show that there's space you know, and kinship for all of us to, to we can com compete in a creative way to, to get better. But at the end of the day, like we are family and community. So. Mariba, too, I'm going to put you on the spot. And, and I, I think you was about to say, talk about maybe your and Rap's relationship, but I, I know one of your mentors, I'm going to blow you up because you just fancy, man. Like, I, I love this story. Like, not a woman, but Stevie Wonder. Like, we talking about a guy. In this, like, was, was a mentor to you early, but aside yes. from Stevie, who who sometimes that might just be all you need or anybody need. Um, who who are the women that you can lean on? You know, as you ascend through this. Well, what I was gonna say is, first of all, it's true we're not islands, but I be needing that reminder sometimes because I'm very reclusive, like as a person, I'm kind of just to myself, but. Honestly, even when I was naming people, like rap is someone that I've looked up to since I first heard about her a minute ago, you know? So when I first met her in North Carolina, <laughs> when I was working with Ninth and Crisis, it was, the, it was that type of moment for me. And knowing that she's in my corner and supports me and like vice, obviously vice versa has been um, really the the closest experience that I've had to someone that, to a woman that I look up to, like on that level, who is that crazy with it, that I can just reach out to and, and feel like a sisterhood with like that. Um, because I just really do kind of be in my own bubble sometimes, just <laughs> existing in my own little world. But, um, but yes, yeah, for Stevie, like that, that was just, that was the universe. Right when I needed it, being like, don't give up. I'm going to give you this one in case you needed a sign. You're going to meet Stevie Wonder and he's going to be your mentor, you know. And he did so much for me as far as putting me back on the path of just believing in myself, believing in producing my own music and writing my own music and just crafting my own sound and not being like, discouraged by the way the industry kind of is set up and works because I am very um I'm just not really an industry type of personality that's not really my thing um I'm very like family oriented and and have the same friends for years and years type of person so um he just really affirmed me when I needed it the most and it's amazing to have him as a mentor but honestly rap is my um yeah, she's my queen. <laughs> oh, you no, know I love you. Every time I was in um, DC recently, and they had a TV screen with different videos and, and interviews, and Mariba's joint came on. And I lit up like I was like, "Look at my girl!" Like, oh, I, I love her. Like, I look up to her too. I'm so inspired by her. So, 
you filled my heart with that one. I'm sorry. I just had to tell her I love her. I love you too, Snow. I think you bring up a good point, like this thing versus the sisterhood, right? And and, and really, I, I believe this just in general, hip hop is that its best. Our thing is, is that its best when it's communal, when we're supporting each other, and, 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 and particularly for the women, the sisterhood that rap speaks about, and, and Mariba speaking about, hey, sometimes I'm just on an island to myself, and that may be by choice, and that may be best for you. Snow, I feel like you could kind of relate to that, to like the island versus the sisterhood and the community. How do you bridge that? Do you yearn for that sisterhood in the same way? Because I know you're very self-sufficient with your team and your fa- and you have a family business with your brother. And, you know, I see your son all the time packing up merch, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. But talk about that that island that you've created for yourself, right, that bubble where you can exist as an artist, but maybe you're yearning for, for sisterhood or for community as well. I think... Um... I mean, don't get don't get it twisted though. You know, like it's not like it's an island for myself. I mean, I got this island for my family. You know what I mean? Like, um, I am very family oriented. I I started this with my brother. My cousin does my merch. My other cousin is my assistant. Like, literally, my family. Like, I I made this be a thing because you know both my parents are in Mexico. Like we have no family really other than like, like who we, we all we got is ourselves you feel me so like my whole life it was like I'm gonna make money we're we're all first generation so our parents made nothing you know they were they literally are the Home Depot workers like the people that everybody you know kind of like makes fun of or whatever whenever they're like oh Trump is gonna deport you you know like that's our family so all we had was to fucking like make something out of ourselves. So my first thing was I'm going to make money in the music industry and then I'm going to buy a little piece of land where we're all like not going to have to worry, you know, and that's what I did. So to me, it's not so much that I'm like trying to stay away from the industry. It's more like I'm so preoccupied with making sure my family's okay that like, fuck yeah. Like if anybody was to want to work, like I'm down and I, and I make it a point to go out there and try But at the same time, like, I just haven't had them be okay yet. You know what I mean? So it's like, I've just been on that. But I've been collabing more than ever lately, you know? And I'm showing up. And if you invite me, I'm showing up. And if you need me, I'll give you whatever you need. Like, but I just... I felt for so long that I was indebted to the people that helped me come up, which is my little cousins and my brother, that I just was like... It wasn't working for me in this music industry, and I, I'm a I'm a man of my word. So I was like, how do I make this happen so that I could show them that I wasn't bullshitting? You know, like you didn't help me in this music venture, and I'm just like, oh well, sorry guys, you know, it didn't work. Like fuck no, you know, like I'm gonna figure it out. And um, now, now that we got the ranch, now that we're all here, now that everybody's in their own little house, and everybody's, you know, we're doing this communal living type vibe, like everybody's happy as fuck and I'm like okay bet like this is the promised land this is what I said we were gonna do now I could get back to work and like you know do what I what I gotta do to keep this shit going but it's beautiful to me you know yeah I've been saying you branch out more too I know you and D Smoke did something recently and stuff like that and and, and that's really dope um I want to talk about rap you know the last time we we spoke together and, and it's even me like as a man and, and as a hip-hop fan and as a creative learning to, to grow because even even some of the things we say even though we might not mean it may just be rooted in oppression sometimes um but this concept of, of, of a female MC rap you you had, when we were speaking and I haven't forgot it you know what I'm saying you said people always try to make me a female MC and ever since I first came out you know you're like I'm not a female rapper don't put me in a female rapper box I don't make music as a female rapper I make music as an MC and I've been actively removing that right like from my vernacular because yeah at the end of the day like and I know it to be true you could put rap on a song with anybody male female or otherwise however you identify and you might could get that ass chewed up it's, it's more than likely whoever it is same thing with rap like when y'all kind of compete and collaborate y'all, y'all do so as as gladiators almost as as MCs as, as rappers and it doesn't matter, man or woman, like y'all coming for that that title. Um, do you think we're out of space now? And and I think there's so many women being celebrated, especially if you saw the Grammys, it was a wonderful celebration, I think, of art. And we saw so many women at the forefront, Megan, the stallion, cleaned up. 
do you think we'll ever get to a point where we could break down that that barrier of female MC, male MC, and it's just who's the best? Yeah, I, I mean, I think everything is a work in progress, right? Um, and for me, I celebrate the small wins. Um, I think we're getting better at it. Are we there? No, we're not all the way there, but you know, we're gonna get there. Um, and I see a lot more men actively speaking up, you know, on our behalfs, whether it be our peers or whether it be. You know, I, I, I scour the, the, the world and, and get a little taste of the Internet just to check the pulse. And I see people speaking up, you know, a little bit more, um, you know, but I, I think we write our own story in that. Right. And in the same way. OK, for example, you remember that there was a time where, you know, you might have had one female lady here, one lady here. And now you see a lot more camaraderie when it comes to, you know, women supporting each other and working together and creating together. And that's because. You know, it, it took us to actively do that to change the narrative because otherwise media will have you believe and fans might have you believe that women can't work together. They don't like each other. There's only one. So, you know, we're always in charge of our own narrative. And I see a lot more ladies, you know, having that that same discourse of, you know, yo, don't put me in the box of female, but I'm, I'm an artist. And I think the more we speak on that, the better we begin to, you know, break down people's um what is it filters of what they were raised on or what they've been taught or what they're used to seeing it's all about changing people's minds and educating people's mind and give them a new perspective and we have to unlearn things and relearn things right right well you know what one of the power that all three of y'all women bring one of the many powers that y'all possess marie but i want, I want to go to you with this but the way that y'all use voice to speak up for our people um in times when we need it the most. Um, Mariba, I, I want to get into to, to Heat Wave a little bit because that's such a powerful record. We don't shoot to miss, click, clack, click, clack, got that heat on his hip. Who going to be crying? Your mom or mine? Like, you know, just knowing what we've seen, um, and, and now we see it more in the news, but it happens every day with police brutality and, and how young black men and women are murdered unjustifiably and with no consequence and you speaking to that um talk talk about just that part of your artistry and, and, and why even heat wave was just so important for you that to have to get out so that type of subject matter has always existed in my writing because like ever since i was a kid i've just been like pretty frustrated about the way the system operates and the way my people are in the center of the suffering that is a a result of how the system operates. Um, and I feel like it's really just in my blood, like on my mother's side, my mother and her siblings were a part of the civil rights movement in America. And my father is from Ethiopia and that's a whole other situation, but there's, it's complex, but it has its own geopolitical um, issues that I was taught about through him. And he actually like, that was the reason why he came to America was he had to for political reasons. He was a very militant person and um, some stuff went down there and he ended up here. And so just having that basis of a family that was always outspoken and speaking on behalf of the people, I think, influenced me to write about the things I wrote about <laughs> when I was a kid and continue to write about those things like to this day. Um, and as far as Heat Wave, Heat Wave, we wrote about, me and Black wrote like 2015. It's been a long time. And unfortunately, every time I sing it, even when I perform it, I'm just like, damn, it's still true. Like, I'm still singing this song with the same passion that I was singing when I wrote it, singing with when I wrote it. And, um, and I think that both of us, we knocked that song out so fast because we just talked about our lives. Like we both have those personal experiences with the police. We both have um, a lot of complex emotions about the system and how we want to see things change and how we can maybe be a part of those changes. But I think the, the, the change starts for me as an artist with just being vocal about it. Cause I feel like that's what I can offer first is my words, my voice, and just being an example, maybe, you know, to other people, like now it's a cooler thing and it's a more common thing to hear about, but 
we need to continue to hear about it. You know what I mean? And we need to keep it at the forefront of our minds because like we can't go back to sleep. You know what I mean? And Heat Wave is just one of the the many songs that I've written that speak on the system and speak on um, what needs to change. Rap, you, you tap Mariba for, for your project, Eve. Um, and y'all also have a collaboration on that project where you really talk about the difficulties of black womanhood and specifically focusing on black widows, you know, dealing with losing men to, to racial violence, right? Um, how did that come together? How, how did you know that, that y- y- y'all two souls were perfect for this collaboration and to, to really express that on Eve? And I feel like me and Mariba kindred spirits on the real. I think if there's not a song that I can't do that I wouldn't think of hitting her, but I try to be respectful <laughs> and not overdo it. But I, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I came up with a song and I wrote it and I felt like, you know, there was an energy missing. There was a presence missing. And I'm a huge fan of her um, outside of, you know, I think she's my friend, but I'm a fan of her music. And, you know, I was like, there's nobody that could tell this story with me but Mariba. You know, there are other people, but she was the first one that came to mind. You know, just, I love the tone of her voice. I love her, her pen, how she writes. And I just felt like she would elevate it to where I, would, I wanted to see it go. And she did. I, would, I came up to the crib, I will remember, and we got in her bedroom and she, yeah. she poured it out. And I remember just watching her do it. And I was just like, this is it. Like, this is the emotion, this is the feeling that, you know, I wanted people to feel. I wanted them to feel the pain and plight of what a Black woman feels when they lose their other half. And now they have to be everything for the family, um, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I, I recognize a kindred spirit when I see one. And, you know, that's why, I, let me tell you, every project I always call Mariba for something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's real. And, and, and Snow, ju- just on this theme of, again, and, and I think we see it not just in music, but in history, when you see protests, when you is it, is so often women on the front lines um, fighting for, for our men and for our children and, and putting their voices and their bodies on the line for social justice and reform and change. Um, Snow, you're no stranger to that within your music. Obviously, the work you did on, on Hamilton, um, soundtrack, Immigrants, We Get the Job Done, um, important record. But, you know, even within your, your, your music, you're always talking about um, Latinos and particularly the Mexican American experience or Mexicans in America experience. And, and I think it's so important for you to use your voice, especially now that we're in the post-Trump era, where I think Mexicans were so attacked if it wasn't building a wall or being called rapists or seeing families separated in camps. Um, it, it, for, for everybody in all marginalized groups, it's been a pretty horrible f- four years under that guy's reign. Kids in cages. Yeah, kids in cages. But, but you've been you very vocal. Biden kids are still in camps or boxes or whatever the hell they want to call it now, but it's the same thing. Talk so, about it. Yeah. Is it, is it really post-Trump? You know what I mean? I think we all wish it was post-Trump, but he's still around. They didn't necessarily block him from being able to run again. So we're still with that, you know, like warning that all this shit ain't gone, you know, and it it sucks, you know? And I think um, what sucks the most, I do think is that sometimes they try to pin like, you know, the struggles, you know, like instead of there being this unity feeling of like all of us marginalized groups, I think a lot of times like, you know, they succeed in making little dramas and troubles between groups um and i think it's fucked up you know so yeah sorry not to interrupt you because I, you didn't get to the, to the rest of your question but i'm just like yeah it pisses me off. i literally keep hearing it like you know they're like trying to find a place to put these kids you know like like a but they don't call it what it really is and what it's been and the whole reason they ran was saying you know kids are in cages and we're gonna make it better and it's like no you're not it's the same thing no i i think i think you raise a, a very good point and and to show that though Trump is not in office, the fight doesn't doesn't stop. And I think you know I read an article um, just over the weekend that said, and I think you're right too about the struggles of, of marginalized people. That how the Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, they did studies and spoke to, to to Latinx leaders and 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 Native American leaders and 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 the struggle of the Black Lives Matter movement 
is helping natives, you know, in, in small ways, the, the Washington Redskins changing their name. And, and that was a fight that native people in this country have been having for years. Like, yo, this is offensive. And, you know, we just see it get changed. So I think the more we fight for each other um, as well, that, that we can get a lot done. But, but just talk about your, 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 your position as an artist um, and using your voice for that. Because you're constantly speaking up for, for, for immigrants and, and for women and, and just for marginalized people in general. My frustration sometimes comes from, for example, yeah, like if I go out there like and I'm at the Black Lives Matter protest, right, um, I will get some of the ignorant people from the Latino community being like, oh, well, I don't see you fight this hard for our, you know, struggles. And then it's like, yes, I do. Like, you're fucking lying to me. Like, I was just out there also for this other... Co so it's like a lot of times you just have to like be everywhere because it feels like people are always nitpicking and obviously you shouldn't like give yourself to the internet like that but um i do try my best to like do my best for every cause and like try to be a good human being i don't even think right now it's something about give me a gold star for doing something it's like literally we're trying to finally change the world something that i think we've been wishing would one day come and now we realize we're the adults that need to fucking make it happen um we used to be the kids that just hoped for it now it's like yo it's on us to really do this shit and um i don't know it's it there's a lot of just emotion and like frustration with some of this because there is not that many voices in like my community that are listened to for this type of stuff so like they kind of sometimes look at me like, yo, you better do the right thing. But it's like, yo, it'd be nice for some, you know what I mean? For there to be more unity, I think, um, in this. And I think everybody's always just nitpicking at, at who's doing wrong or what are you doing more for this cause or that cause or whatever. But I'm, I'm happy with where things are as far as women, as far as gay rights, as far as, you know, like um, with, with Black Lives Matter, with Latino, with immigrants, with all these things. I'm happy with the fact that things are finally moving you know what i mean and we're waking up and people are paying a little bit more attention um but you know i think the, the we got a lot of work to do you know and that and that sucks and that's why sometimes i put my little bits of information that i need to get across to fans in like a fun song rather than just kind of going super like cerebral with it because i think some of the people that we need to get to aren't listening for that you know they're listening for they're trying to like turn up and then you put a little line in there that makes them kind of like oh shit you know they're in the middle of the party now they're thinking like fuck maybe i should do something you know and i try to do it that way only because it's just in line with what i do you know i'm the stage diving crowd surfing shot taking you know like stripper tipping bitch that like happens to care about social issues in the morning but um i don't know it's just kind of who i am but I think it's necessary for everyone to do their part every way, every which way, and just kind of change the world. You know, I have a 10 year old, like I hope he grows up in a way better world than, 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 you know, we did. So it's, it's just a responsibility at this point. Nah, it, it, it's dope and it's inspiring and, 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 you know, not just the social work, but, uh, and how you use your voice, but in all the, the ways that all of y'all use your voices, I, I think, you know, obviously you're entertaining us. Um, you know, you're making us dance, you're making us fall in love, you're making us cry and deal with heartbreak, you're making us, you know, allowing us to deal with social issues. And, you know, I just wanted to speak to y'all because y'all y'all three of my favorite artists. Rap City, Mariba, Snow the Product, my sisters, thank you so much for joining us and, and being part of this conversation with Genius and Patron. I can't thank y'all enough. It's been a pleasure. And thank you all for watching. This has been For the Record. And we're going to see you next time. Peace. So Patron, they, they got it right. That's If I were to say this is a goddess drink, this is the five goddess and femininity. Right.